Um, Harry, could you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Harry Hubbard. I'm originally from Georgia, lived in Florida, uh, traveled a lot over throughout the United States, and I've been living here in the middle of nowhere uh, since uh, on and off since uh, 2002. And why? What has brought you to Marion County, Illinois? The fact that years ago, my uh, friend Paul uh, deciphered some stones that were originally uh, claimed to be from Marion County, Illinois, and they turned out to be a Latin uh, mishmash of Mediterranean languages, Greek, uh, Latin with Phoenician characters, a lot of Egyptian hieroglyph, uh, a lot of Numidian, and the stones uh, told a story about uh, a colony uh, uh, leaving from Alexandria, Egypt, and coming here. And when did they leave? Uh, looks about like 25 to 30 BC. And so they came through the Gulf of Mexico, up the Mississippi River. Right, they went from uh, uh, around the Horn of um, Florida, then came up Mississippi, then they came up the Ohio River, the Big Wabash, the Little Wabash, the Skillet Fork, into the Lick Branch, and where there's a couple of ravines there. So why has no one in history heard about this? Well, we have done everything. Well, it was quite obscure until 1982, and then it was uh, it was it's, it's still extremely obscure until we came on the scene in 1994. And and since 1994, we have done everything that we possibly could to uh, to inform people of it and uh, inform people of our discovery and as w what our deductions were. Everything that we learned um, since the beginning has all compounded and expanded upon what we initially had had discovered. So these artifacts, where, where are they located? Uh, well, there are, many lo there are many collectors all over the country. Uh -huh. There are collectors in Europe uh -huh. that actually uh, purchased some of these uh, artifacts, and, and Australia as well. So, where, I mean, where were they found originally? They were, they were found just a few miles away from here. Okay. And in Marion County, Illinois. Okay, and, and what and were they just? They're in a cave. They're in a cave. In a cave. The cave was documented first in 1925. Okay. And it was written about in the uh, 80s and in the uh, uh, the 70s uh, in in treasure books. And this one guy uh, crisscrossed the information from two different treasure books, and then he got into the area. And then some of the local, two of the local people actually escorted him to this site. And then he started extracting the artifacts. He found a way into this cave and yeah. he started extracting artifacts and he did so for a solid eight years. But not only artifacts, gold as well. Okay, could you tell me a little bit about the gold? Well, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, in, in all their ledger books, it appears that he first found a couple of pieces of gold and like uh, um, at the end of uh, the, his hunting season, mm -hmm. which would be first of fall of 1985, 86 or so. But it was in 87, 88, and 89 when he really started pulling out just literally uh, probably a ton and a half of gold. So this is just a local guy who's never been really interested in treasure hunting before? No, no. He, 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 I don't know what he, the only thing interest that I could ever uh, um, elaborate on that he would have is uh, not telling the truth. So, uh, and which appears that he has done all his life. It's, um, it's quite unfortunate that such a scoundrel uh, came across this, uh, this uh, amazing discovery or amazing find. Like I say, he didn't discover anything. Yeah. But, uh, and, and he began to pilferage it to antique dealers, yeah. uh, museum curators, uh, history buffs uh, were buying artifacts. And he was selling them dirt cheap. You know, it was, uh, uh, I mean, real nice marble marble uh, bar reliefs you know uh, beautiful italian carrera marble for yeah. 25 bucks you know so why was he selling them so cheap uh he was he was uh, hey man it's a hard it was a hard work a hard, rough way to make a living back in the mid 80s yeah yeah you know so this group of people from you know, alexander egypt who did they include would really be people who are known to you know yes uh, well uh uh the the person in charge of the flotilla, armada, whatever you want to say, that uh, initially came here was Alexander Helios, who is a missing son of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a twin sister, Cleopatra Selene, and she married a fellow named King Yuba II. 
And so King Yuba II assisted his brother-in-law, Alexander Helios, mm -hmm. into come, you know, with uh, ships and supplies and logistics to uh, what it appears to either get them out of Alexandria and then over to Gadiz, yeah. the uh, 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 port of Gadiz, and then t from here, uh, probably Gadiz to the Canary Islands, yeah. and then and then across on, the, yeah, the across. So yeah. Why, why were they on the run? Well, uh, at that time, Rome was just in absolute turmoil. Octavian uh, had taken over, and he was uh, on a rampage, and a lot of people were being sacrificed. And at the time also, after the Battle of Actium, if you want to call it a battle, what had happened was is uh, 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 there was a lot of friction between Mark Anthony's army and the army of Octavian. Mm -hmm. And Mark Anthony's army did not want to uh, 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 work under uh, Octavian, yeah. so it looks to me like they, they packed up and left. It, it appears to us that as many as 50,000 uh, people sailed over here in triremes, quinqueremes. That's not going to be a lot of ships, isn't it? Uh, well, they could get a thousand people on a ship. No, no yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah, and then one how, of the largest ships ever recorded in history by Pliny, uh, it was uh, Augustus took it, cut it in half, and made a harbor out of it. Oh, it was a huge. Ship. A yeah, ship. huge. So there's there's not much in the historical record supporting this at the moment. Well, you have uh, uh, the. Uh, or is there? Sorry. You have uh, Diodorus Siculus writes about a, a great land, a, a great island, many yeah. days sail to the west that the Carthaginians had found around 500 B.C. Yeah. And and then you have uh, 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 Pliny, who's writing about uh, uh, um, King Uber the Second. He says that nobody knows the Atlantic better than King Uber the Second. Okay. Yeah, he and he really hails a lot of Pliny comes from Uber the Second. So given that, uh, that's uh, and 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 then beyond that though, there's folklore. Um, like I say, Pliny writes about several lost islands out there. Cause, in, the, cause in the Atlantic. Funny enough, we're near an area here in Illinois that's called Little Egypt. Is that anything to do with it, or is that just... Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's possible that 100, 200 years ago, some Amish kid or some Mennonite kid had found some tablets with uh, Egyptian hieroglyph on them. There have been many, many nice artifacts found in this area, Just in, and even close here, and in southern Egypt, yeah. I mean, in southern Illinois, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... They got here, and what, what did they do when they get when they got here? Is, is that known, or is, have you got any suppositions about that? No, never thought about it. No? You know, they probably did their best to survive uh, and and and, uh, and 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 deal with the elements: tornadoes, ticks, mosquitoes, <laughs> uh, airborne, you know, spiders, yeah. etc. You know, we have a lot of creatures here that are just absolutely nasty. Uh, rattlesnakes, which we see a lot of rattlesnakes uh, yeah. over over in, in Egypt. They have the cobra over here. We have rattlesnakes and copperheads. Yeah, so they kind of probably just uh, if they were here or when they were here, assimilated into the local population or died out. Or I don't know how you assimilate into a population where that population is uh, is uh, uh, like uh, Stone Age yeah. or in front of that, you know, yeah. or Paleo Stone Age. And, and and then you have had a lot of inbreeding and whatever. So here you've got someone of uh, intelligence and culture attempting to mix with someone who is basically retarded or of uh, moron intelligence. Yeah. How, you know, how does that how, how does that happen? I don't know. There could have been friction. Uh, they uh, if, if not, then those natives would have just captured them, killed them, yeah. kidnapped them. Uh, Done their best to breed with them, yeah. to whatever extent is 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 imaginable. It's all speculation. So going back to the cabin you took us to earlier today, well, the entrance to the cabin. What what is underneath there? What is uh, a series of caverns in sandstone? Yeah, and sandstone is not indicative to include uh, uh, caves or caverns. Uh, you have to have limestone for that and water flow. And so these are hand-hewn caverns. Yeah. Hand-hewn uh, so caverns. So it took the time to do it. Yes. They, yeah. But see, the sandstone there where we were at yeah. is quite soft. It's not like it's a suit. It's not like you uh, have to ha have a hammer and chisel just to <laughs> just to you know ping out an inch in a day. Yeah. You can take a, a piece of dogwood and a rock and carve several feet into it probably in a day. Yeah. It's not like it took 200 years for them to carve this cavern system in the sandstone. So. Is, this, so is, is that where Alexander the Great, because they, they, you know, you'd said earlier that they brought him over as well, his body. They brought the entire family Sema yeah. over, yeah. And that's all under there where we were earlier. Yeah, yeah. 
So, you know, why hasn't someone like just said, right, let's go and dig it up? I was, I, I've been hoping for years that somebody would say, hey, Harry Hubbard, he's got a loud mouth. Uh, I'm going to really put him in his place. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's shut him up once and for all, and let's uh, make fools out of him and his buddy Paul Shafranca. And no one stepped forward to do that. Uh, yeah. No one, and, 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 and I guess they see our data or see some of our videos, and they just realize they don't want to tangle us when it comes to ancient mm. languages or classical history. So you've been doing this for decades now. Yes. D does it ever feel frustrating that, you know, maybe no one said, well, like you said, all right, here's some money. Uh, has it ever felt frustration for the past 20 years every day? Yes, it has felt frustrating. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. So how it's do you not, it is not a good thing to discover or find or try to propagate ancient Mediterranean tombs in North America. No, I can't it's not. not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, if you're trying to change the history of North America, you have no friends. Yeah. If you're trying to change the history of the world, everyone hates you. Okay, so there, you know. So, so why, why is that? Why, why is this sort of, um, you know, like consensus is so held on so dearly by, you know, conventional archaeologists and. Historians? I was hoping you could tell me that. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, people get locked into a mindset and a dogma and they run with it, and that's, that's what they do. Yeah. So what, how do you see this developing in the future? What do you see your, how do you see your work unfolding further down the line? It's, uh, things are taking place now and, and others are coming into really understanding what we have been saying. And, but, and, and a lot of these people, they've known this and followed it for 16, 17 years. Yeah. And it, the, to, understand all this is a long attention span a, a required learning curve yeah and because there is so much to it and it's been going on for so long and now we are so far down the road and but we've got plenty of videos we've documented as much as we could mm -hmm. i've written two books i'm about halfway three uh, uh finished with uh, book three uh -huh. that i have done my best to keep track of everything uh, uh as bitter and truthful as it is because a lot of it is a, is, is a very, very bad story. Yeah. It's, it's a bad story you, taking a turn awry for the worst, okay? So. <laughs> Could you explain a little bit about that? Why, why is a bad story taken for the worst? Well, it's a, 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 an ancient Egyptian tomb of Macedonians in the middle of the heartland of North America. It doesn't get any worse than that. Yes. It doesn't get any worse. <laughs> I can't think of anything. You know, if, okay, if the people looking for Alexander's tomb had tablets with Alexander, uh, Mariam and Setep and Ra written in Egyptian glyph on them, they would just be dancing in the streets. Yeah. They would, they, you know, if they had half, one-tenth of what it is that we have but here. But if it was in somewhere, somewhere where conventional wisdom would right, be, right, like right. say if it was in Syria or... Jordan or yeah, Macedonia yeah. or Greece or yeah. Italy. But two miles, two hours east of St. Louis. Yeah, it's, yeah it's no, no, flying. no, 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 <laughs> it, it's, it's, uh, uh, that's, that's not the right place. Yeah, it's not the right place. So there's been some interesting characters involved in this over the years. You know, like there was a guy who was a convicted, well, he was a Nazi, and then he was convicted as a pedophile. And do you think that's kind of just really stirred the pot too much that probably that no one's gonna? Uh, well, there there have been uh, artifacts that are tainted also. Um, yeah. You know, yes, there have been many questionable characters that are absolute idiots. You know, I'll, I'll agree with that. Mm. And and there are. Uh, uh, there are artifacts that have been faked from top to bottom, and then a lot of artifacts that have been tainted. By that I mean Burroughs would take a, an actual artifact, a real artifact, and he would add things to it. Yeah. Okay. And there was this one guy professing to be an expert out in Colorado, and he bought a bunch of tablets from Russ Burroughs. And he, and he figured that the, ta that the cave had to be fake, that this was all a hoax because he couldn't make any decipherments. Yeah. Okay, but he claimed that he knew all these ancient languages. Yeah. Well, if, if, how come he didn't realize that all of his stones, every one of them were fake? Everything. And there are people that have, that have actually gone and seen uh, 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 collections of these artifacts, yeah. and every collection that they have seen was nothing but a bunch of taints. So, and then they just think, well... Yeah, they think rubbish. that, yeah, yeah, because they haven't seen enough of the real artifacts to to See, understand that uh that uh you know what is what what has happened so um has anyone like attempted to you know like take the artifacts to like the state archaeologists or something like this i've Saturday? done that i've done that i do that quite often uh whenever i'm fixing to sell a real expensive artifact and i'm in springfield i always go and show the guys 
uh, there at the state house yeah. uh, the artifact and tell them what I'm what I'm getting for and it. And what did they say? They just they just oh it's it is the Harry Hubbard in here again and and you know, and, and then uh, this one guy he goes let me let me go see Doctor So and So she might want to meet the Harry Hubbard <laughs> you know and and so they'll come in I'll show them the art and to them it's all fake. To yeah. them, they just look at these, this amazing artifact that came from Marion County. Oh, well, we don't, uh, uh, I had one uh, professor tell me, well, we don't have anything on our, on our, in our records that show anything in that area. So mm -hmm. your artifacts must be fake. Is there any way of like radiocarbon dating them or anything? Oh, like that? yeah, there's all kinds of forensic tests that, that, that uh, I've had uh, over a couple of dozen of them yeah. go through a uh, forensic lab out of Santa Fe with people <coughs> who deal with artifacts and archaeologists from all over the world, not yeah. just. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, the ignorant people yeah. in, in the state of Illinois, yeah. but they are, you know, they work with museums all over the world and, you know, different countries, China, Russia, uh, and Tibet. Did, and what did they come back? Oh, they come back at plus 1,800 years before present, plus 1,600 years before present, uh, no modern tool markings, uh, no high RPM uh, markings at all. Uh, um, you know, so yeah, RPM means like machine tooled. Sort of yeah, thing, or yeah. somebody twisting yeah. something. You know that that they all are carved in the ancient manner. Yeah. So say it is discovered to be true for some reason. You know, it's that's it. You know, like it's all true. You've been proven right. What do you do then? I would probably hit the lecture circuit. Uh, yeah. Spend some more time uh, with deciphering and cataloging uh, artifacts. Uh, uh, getting more explanations and and uh, solving more riddles yeah. that we've encountered with the artifacts, and uh, and moving moving on, uh, cutting more uh, really off the wall and strange videos that I enjoy doing the, yeah. uh, that discoveries I make with my researches and reading. Okay, so writing more books, yeah. Drinking, no. I'm not <laughs> <say>. <laughs> um, so I was going to say. Um, you know, some people have said, well, you know, this is just a big con that's kind of got out of control and everyone involved kind of fooled themselves that it's real. What, what would you say to people like that? Uh, they have, they don't know the whole story. Yeah. Uh, it is presented like, that way and it is presented um, um, poorly and well as, yeah. as, a, as a con, as a hoax. And a lot of the, uh, the stuff about me is, is absolute slander. Yeah. Even the, uh, the, uh, the Nazi pedophile. A lot of what other people say about him is slandered. It's yeah. not true. And a lot of what things that people even say about Burroughs, the culprit, the uh, perpetrator of yeah. many, many crimes, they make up things that are not true also. So it, it, it has all become so ambiguous that you really have to follow uh, the issue and really do a lot of research and homework. Yeah. And, 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 and like I say, spend a lot of time. You're not going to learn about it overnight. Yeah. And, and so... Uh, I, a lot of these people are, are entirely logical to think that they just don't know the whole story. So you know, w w people watching this, they might decide to like, yeah, I'm going to go to Marion County, Illinois, and buy myself some ancient Egyptian artifacts. What would you say to them? I'd, I'd tell them that it's it's in the southeast part of the county. Yeah, and just go look in. And, yeah, 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 just and 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 uh, uh, they there are look at our videos online. Uh, and on Vimeo too, yeah. and on, on our Facebook, uh, we have all the information there, location, location, location. Yes. And anybody who is looking for this, they can find out, you know, the, the exact area of where it is that we have uh, said that this, that this exists. So what do the locals think of this? So, uh, some for it, some Well, there's, there's two thoughts to the, to the locals. You have uh, Neanderthal locals, and then you have intelligent locals. Yeah. The intelligent locals wish that something would happen, uh, which, I mean, this will be a boom to this entire area. But this area has been so economically depressed for the last 40, 50 years that people wouldn't know. What, what, you mean something here would actually come about that would yeah. be, you know, create jobs? You know, uh, you know what? You know, there, there's this mindset that there's nothing good about Southern Illinois. Yeah. And, and that a, a lot of the inhabitants here actually do take that to heart. Yeah. And then, and, and, uh, and then you have uh, the others that are really up to snuff. They've, they followed the story. They know they have found things themselves yeah. and they realize things and they have done their homework. And that's, that's another thing that we have, uh, you know, that's yeah. pretty good, you know. So going back earlier to about the gold, like how much would you estimate how much gold was taken out of the cavern? I have recorded uh, four piles of gold from pictures and and uh, and people who have uh, dealt with burrows years and years ago, and there's still one pile out there 
that I don't know where where it is. I haven't seen any of the uh, um, the replicated pieces yeah. from that pile, and it was a it was a huge pile. So, what's that? Millions I would say I would say in upwards of a ton and a half to two tons, which right. isn't that much. I mean, you know. But yeah, not much. Yeah, if it's melted it down, yeah. Yeah, but how much would that be? Cause I, I'm not. I can't do the calculation in my head. Anyone watching this, you know, that would be a, half a ton of gold. At was it thousand dollars an ounce? Well, see, then you're talking uh, uh, ounces of Louvier and Troy ounces. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, because see, you got you know your French English ounces, and then you have Troy ounces, which yeah, are in gold, yeah. which yeah. And and so you know, it's they're 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 quite commonly different. You know, could so. you give me a figure roughly? Uh, I wouldn't say, well, if it's, um, if it was 70, 7, 300,000 back in 1987, I would say, uh, when the, when the price of gold was 320 bucks an ounce or 360 yeah. bucks an ounce, you could just exponentially add that up yeah. to, you know, four times that amount, okay. maybe yeah. four times, which was what, 28, $30 million, but that's just an actual gold weight. Yeah. And then intrinsic value, billions, see, billions. See. These these artifacts I have here, okay, yeah. are are intrinsically worth millions of dollars. Yeah, you know, and well, because they're proof of, um, you know, pre-Columban contact. Yeah, and European contact, yeah. Egyptian contact. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a Mediterranean contact. We yeah. we kind of try to stay away from the labeling of this and that and this. And that. Yeah. Mediterranean Me covers everybody. Like, so yeah, Me Mediterranean civilization contact with North America. Um, so, are you getting rich off this yourself? Uh, absolutely not. I've, I've gone broke. <laughs> I went broke years and years ago. I survive okay. Yeah. I, uh, I am fortunate to live like within three and a half miles uh, distance from, from the tomb site. I had spent a lot of money through the years uh, with uh, different crews doing research mm. and, and through the years just to find out for sure where the location was, where mm. this tomb was. Mm. And I had to do it. Nobody, there was nobody else to do it. I had no backing. And uh, uh, and it sure would be nice to have some help to to push this forward. So, how much do you think you would need to prove it conclusively? Somebody, the the current landowner, uh, uh, assuming Neanderthal, uh, would uh, he's asking a million dollars for 120 acres of the lot, and that uh, and I, I don't know if it, 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 he's you know with the uh, mentality here yeah. if somebody came across with here's a check for a million dollars he might say oh no I want two million okay because uh, that's what you have here that's yeah. what I've been dealing with and but a, mi a million dollars is is way above what the price should be for that market value that. probably about twice uh, yeah. for that but it's, it's it's the finest piece of property on the planet there's it's, you don't talk about a hell of a piece of real estate. Uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, well, what is uh, the land where that has a uh, uh, the ancient ancient Ptolemaic Sema buried on it, with Queen of Queens Cleopatra and and uh, and and uh, Arxantris, You know, yeah. Alex, Alex, Alexander the Great. You know, well, what's it worth? What's it worth? It's probably worth more than the property that the uh, big tower in Dubai sits on. Yeah. You know. Well, so say it's discovered and you you own the land. What well, what would you do? Would you charge admission, or how would it work? I would have to uh, consult people, or I, I I don't. I'm not a marketing engineer. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> so, so uh, someone would have to come in and, and and get together with marketing. Like I say, there's zero infrastructure out here. Yeah. And and there's uh, there's there's no water, uh, very little power. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I guess they did have telegraph at one, you know, one stage of evolution. But, uh, but at any way, uh, there would have to be an infrastructure established, uh, and and the and I would take all of the infrastructure out of Marion County. Okay, I would go south into Jefferson County, okay. and I would go east into Wayne County, and only remain in Mar in Marion County as little as possible. Why is that? Because Marion County Board of Commissioners will fight you tooth and nail every step of the way. Okay. Wayne County already has people in place that are ready for this to get bigger. Yeah. And then and, and the county south of us here in Jefferson County. Those counties are a lot more progressive, a lot more forward thinking than the, uh, than the dinosaurs who run, you know, uh, Marion County. Final question. Do you ever <clears throat> sometimes lie in bed at night thinking, I wish I'd never heard about it? I wish that I wish that I, I could have read it from my easy chair. I would have rather read the story than have to live it. 
I would have rather somebody else be Harry Hubbard and me be still down in my condo in Cocoa Beach, you know, on top of the ocean, reading about it, and that's where I'd rather be, you know, as, as far as uh, the whole scenario. It's been too much of a nightmare. My life has been threatened way too many times, yeah. and, and uh, it gets old, um, and, and the slander. Uh, I've been attacked, well, physically people, people attacked people several times. Well, how, how did that happen? Uh, local Neanderthals. Yeah, well, just a punch in the face. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There's it's been some rumbles. There's been some rumbles. So are you kind of a, a man who walks around the community. Some people really don't like you. Some people. Are yes, and I and I, I carry weapons. Okay. Well, it is America. <laughs> <laughs> it's America. It's America. You have to carry something to just to keep the Neanderthals off of you. Cool. But no doubt. All right. Thank you. Cool. Really is this smoke going to be... I did think at one point, there was, I think it makes it like we're in a back room we're somewhere a jazz, discussing geopolitics. We're a jazz cap.